Alrighty folks, welcome to the next lesson in the WX Widgets series. My name is Mike and thank you for joining me again. And if you need to set up Windows, Linux, or Mac, check out the other videos in this series. In this series, we are going to go ahead and get started with OpenGL development in WX and just get a little take to that. So go ahead and navigate to wherever WX Widgets is. And if you have properly set up WX Widgets, you'll have the WX config tool and you can go ahead and see the version that I am running here, 3.1.5, and you'll know you're ready to proceed in this series if you have WX config and it is running here from anywhere on your system. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is navigate into the WX widgets folder, one of the downloads that I have here. Let's go ahead to 3.1.5. And you'll notice in this folder, if you cd into the samples directory, that there are some nice examples, and in particular, the OpenGL ones are the ones that we want to get running today. And we can go ahead and see that there's this nice cube example here. And the nice thing about the samples is they're basically just one source code file. That's what we're going to see here, basically in the cube.cpp. So that's all we really have to worry about compiling. Now there might be a little caveats here, which you'll see me deal with. And then otherwise there might be some other information in cube and we'll look at those files. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a copy here in this directory so you can see a clean directory, okay? Uh, so maybe the easiest way to do this is to split my screen here. And if you don't use Tmux, that's okay. You can check out any of the uh, lessons I have on that. But uh, basically all I'm gonna do is make a new directory here that's on the right side of the window here. And I'm just gonna call this my project and CD into my project. So we can go ahead and see what's going on there. And it might be a little bit easier for folks <laughs> if you can see the whole thing here. So again, there's nothing in this folder uh, as of now here. Uh, but what I do wanna do is just copy that cube file into uh, this project here. So I'll go ahead back here, cube CPP, and I'll just copy that here. So we just have cube.cpp. And if you want, you can go ahead and take a moment to look at this. You'll go ahead and see this is a relatively old file that has been created uh, by Julian Smart. So it's going to be using old OpenGL. Again, I'll talk about new OpenGL later, uh, but we can see what's going on here. So you can see some of the legacy OpenGL stuff. My goal is just to get this running today to show you again another sample that is working. So you can see some of the different things here. Now, the important thing or how WX works is it basically sets up this WXGL context. So if you've used other libraries like SDL2, GLFW, or GLUT, or FreeGLUT, or any of those libraries, this is basically the equivalent that allows you to connect an OpenGL context that's on the OpenGL side to render to the window. So you'll do everything here in WX. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try to give this a compile. Uh, you can use G++ or Clang++, it won't matter on this series, but go ahead and choose one. And let's go ahead and try to uh, compile cube. I'll just output it as program and let's see what happens. Well, first problem we have again is we don't have any of these files here. If you recall from our previous uh, lesson here, we need to use WX config and do the CPP flags and the libs here, okay? Uh, so before I even run that, just to give you a refresher, again, if you just hit the WX config tool, it'll give you this giant uh, sort of readme here, and you can scroll up and see how this tool is used. So here's WX. Here are the different flags that I'll link in the libraries uh, that you need, as well as the include files from CPP flags. Okay, so that is that tool here. Let me go ahead and clear that so it doesn't distract you, and let's go ahead and hit enter. And oh my goodness, we are still getting a bunch of problems here. So what happened here? Well, again, it's not enough to just have cube here. So let's go ahead and copy one directory up, cube.h and pop it in here. Here is our file structure. And let's go ahead and try to recompile this. Go ahead and hit enter. And oh my goodness, we are missing yet another file here. Now this one's kind of interesting here. There's this uh, sample dot xpm file okay so i'm going to go ahead and look at this from our cube directory again on top here is the original 
WX files on bottom here is my project that I am setting up here. Now, what is this? Uh, well, let's go ahead and just see if we can find it maybe in Vim. If I go up to directories, I'm just following the structure here, not panicking uh, quite yet and sample uh, XPM. Here it is, I'll hit enter. And it looks like a file with just a few things here. Maybe they're using this for uh, an icon or some data or whatever. But let's just go ahead and copy that into our project here. So I'm going to copy. This will be three directories up here, sample.xpm, uh, and it'll live in this directory here. And well, there's a couple ways that I can uh, tackle this. Again, I can just change it in my actual cube.cpp um, at line 34. That's what I'm going to uh, go ahead and do. So cube.cpp go to line 34 and make sure that I am accessing sample XPM here. Okay, so that's just my little change. You wouldn't have to do that if you were just using the actual WX examples, but I wanna show you or get you set up for a fresh project here. And again, my goal here, you can delete this thing if you want or, or put it somewhere else, uh, but it's just to show you how to compile the examples. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit enter and uh-oh, we're getting some interesting stuff here now. Okay, so again, not yet to panic. Error messages sometimes are our friends. <laughs> At least to start, they are. They're telling us what are we doing wrong here. So we're getting a little bit of panic here as far as some .h files and so on being missing. Um, there's some warning here about um, you know, using null here, which in modern C++ we like to use null pointer. Uh, but the real issue is with this WX canvas, this WX explicitly GL canvas. That is the problem here, okay? It's being uh, referenced. So first thing we always have to ask ourselves, is this a linker error or is this a compiler error? And anytime we're getting undefined symbols like this, this probably is a linker problem, okay? So let's go ahead and fix this. So here's what we're compiling with, and we are relying on the WX config tool to do our compilation. So recall that the libraries that we actually have here are, well, if I look through this list just sort of one by one here, you might notice that there is one GL for OpenGL. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, figure out how would I explicitly use basically this uh, GL library here. So if I go ahead and scroll up, we can try to see, you know, do we have an example here or whatever. Um, something I like to do, or that's uh, helpful to me, is just to uh, search for WX config uh, tool here. And the wiki page is pretty helpful in case you forget this stuff. Um, but you'll notice when we actually do the uh, configs here, and for those who have followed all the lessons and maybe have seen the uh, advanced user interface, you can see how we can link in specific libraries here. So maybe we want the standard libraries and GL, okay, for example. So let's go ahead and uh, do that here below. So I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller temporarily just so I can fit everything on uh, one line here. So we want the libs, standard, and GL. I'll hit enter. And hmm, looks like we're doing uh, pretty well here. It just says one warning generated. So if I go ahead and hit ls, looks like we have an executable here. I'll hit enter a few times just so you can see prog is what we generated. And I'll do dot slash prog. I'll hit enter, and well, voila, we have our WX widgets, OpenGL cube example. Uh, I can click on these menus here, uh, do these minimization things. You might have stereo support here. Um, looks like I don't, so it's just going to crash, so you don't have that here. Okay, uh, and I'll just ignore all these reports here. Uh, but that's fine, but uh, we do have the actual OpenGL uh, example running here that we can use. Now. Now that we uh, don't need uh, this cube example, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. And let's go ahead and again, take a little closer look at this file here, cube.cpp. Um, and actually, anytime I'm looking at code, I don't know. Let me actually start with the, the .h just to sort of orient you. Again, the, the real key, if you want to use OpenGL, whether you're going to use modern OpenGL, and you'll see me do the same thing in a future lesson, is just to use this wxgl context or to inherit from this context. And if you follow the source tree a little bit from this wxgl context, you'll see that it is basically just inheriting from regular wx uh, window and so on. 
um, so that you can get everything um, set up in that way. This one just happens to support rendering in different modes and double buffering and all those kind of things. It's actually a relatively simple um, class uh, if you look at it in the documentation. Uh, but for now, it's enough for you to just see these things. Again, you'll see that your test canvas is just, again, inheriting from the WXGL canvas and so on. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, one quick look at CubeCPP now. Go ahead and just take a peek here. Again, we've got some of our OpenGL stuff, so you can write your OpenGL functions just as you would here. Uh, here's some functions for drawing the dice and so on and so on. Um, so there, they're actually creating a, a texture and doing some of that kind of stuff here within WX. So it's kind of a fun example. Again, this is old school uh, OpenGL that you're going to see here. Let me scroll down here. So this is prior to what most folks are using these days. But you know, this is like OpenGL 1 uh, stuff here. Um, so you know, Mac users might need to use this or maybe older platforms. Uh, Max a little bit behind on their OpenGL support, only supporting 4.1, but I still wanted to show this example working either way. Um, so in one of the future lessons, I will do something to show you how to get modern OpenGL up and running and a window or a triangle, perhaps. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson on getting the WX Widgets OpenGL sample running. It's not the most exciting thing, but I think it can be frustrating for beginners. So if this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss those future lessons on future things I do with WX. And we'll see you in the next one.